Hello Captains, it's me Tonic TZW and if you're looking forward to the new update with the Megadeth collaboration you can basically get this ship for free because it looks as though the collab ship is going to be a rendition of the Marblehead. This one is simply called Megahead because it's a combination of Megadeth and Marblehead. It's not what you get from your girlfriend or your wife when she's needing new shoes. So let's just have a quick look down at my captain and inspirations we're running norman scott here and uh, i have got beeply but i haven't got her leveled yet so we've got direct impact there for shell grouping we're then running beyond range to give us that extra distance and trust me you do need it because you are very very fragile then we've got Igniter for a 3% chance to cause fire. And then another survivability skill comes up with Armed and Ready. So that is increasing incoming fire dispersion. And again, survivability is key in this ship. Next, we've got Fixated to uh, increase our shell grouping and reduce the dispersion because the shells are quite floaty. And then for our legendary skill, we are running Refill Station to reduce our reload time and also it does give us a bit of extra range again if we're quite close to friendly ships. Inspirations wise, Shanhorst for reducing main battery dispersion. And then the second inspiration, we've got Mr. Italian or Mimbelli there, Francesco, and he is further reducing our reload time. So we've got 16-3, 16-3, and I think 16-2 there. Teams wise, it's a three or four, a three four match. Um, there's a carrier in here as well, which is absolutely awesome, isn't it? A few battleships, and those are the guys we're going to have to be keeping an eye out for because they can punch very, very big holes in it. It's um, similar playstyle to the Omaha. This it is a bit of a spammer, and um, but I'm not good to be hiding behind islands just shooting across the top we are going to be fixating on a number of targets rotating the fire through and we are going to be doing what we can to give our team the best chance of winning but we aren't going to be able to do everything um but it was close it was close I'm playing with Jazz the Merciful, Jared, and um, he's from the opposite side of the world where it's daylight when it's nighttime here and nighttime when it's daylight here. But he's a very good player, so if you see him on your team, you know, support him and together you'll do very well. If you see him on the red team, be very, very wary, especially if he's in his Ark Royal. And strangely, he didn't bring his carrier in for this match, but we get the T-22 spotted. And even though he's pretty much at maximum range and he's a little target, we are going to pepper some shots around him there just to let him know that we are looking at him. Because if we can keep him off the cap, then we can turn this cap in our favor. We've got two cruisers tracking broadside there. But we're going to keep peppering shots at that destroyer and pushing him back. Because he knows now that if he's spotted, we are going to shoot at him. And that is a good rule, not only for low tiers like this, but for the higher tiers as well. If there's a destroyer spotted, get the shots on, let him know that you're looking at him, and let him know that you are prepared to take shots. But the ML is tracking hard and fast across there. I think there's a furry taco out there as well. And there's going to be a Congo coming in this direction. But it looks like the majority of the team have come in this direction as well. But we're going to keep the fire on the ML. There's the furry. He's pushed very hard and fast out round to the flank. And he is getting shots on to that guy that has pushed all the way down. A little bit overextended, I think. And I think he's going to get punished for that one. But we are going to hold the central position here. There's a the guy there. There's the Congo. Now, one of the skills that you'll see that I have there tells me how many ships are targeting me. Currently one. The most I've seen on that is eight. And that was in a high tier match. And it wasn't a very comfortable feeling at all. But here we go. Leading that T-22. 
there's some shots on there's a fire we're going to get away from this congo t22 disappears again and now we're looking at playing for position three cruisers on the right destroyer in the center battleship on the left what are we going to be able to do about this one as we lose our emil bertan that is not a good start to the game he's out for first blood I'm going to push across to this flank because the Degai is pushing. We know that the Furry Taco is out there too. We can only get some shots onto the Emil. We know we're spotted. We're firing our guns. We've got a huge range on this thing. And um, I think we're going to remain spotted for the majority of this match. But there's a fire on the Emil. And it looks like that one is ticking. Targeted by one. Who is it? Who can see me? Who wants to shoot at me? I don't know, but the rule is, if you're being targeted, turn. Oh, there we go, Furry Taco hiding behind the island. Let's get some shots across the back. Now, Jared was going to come out and push round to the rear of this, and that seemed like a good idea at the time, but with a position of that um, Furu Taka, he has got um, mostly rearward facing torpedo angles. So you sail around that corner and you're running the risk of um, sailing straight into a spread of torpedoes. Now, I'm still spotted. I don't know what's got me spotted. Can we drop detection here? We're looking for where we drop detection. No, there's the furry tackle backing out. I'm certain that he's trying to get torpedoes on. We've got AP loaded. We only get a bit of a chip on him. But I think that he thinks that he is going to get pushed round to the front now. And uh, so we change direction. We're actually going to go to the front because that's where these guys, we've got four ships here and the Congo is going to come back too. But here we go. Back on to the Emil. The extra reload or the reduced reload on this is well worth it. So there we go. We're on the board with the first kill of the game. There's the T-22. We've only got AP loaded, but we're going to put a salvo on him as well. This battleship has nosed in and Furry thinks he's going to come around the corner and actually get some shots on this guy. And I know that he's turning for torpedoes. He's got to be. We splash those shots, wash the decks, and we angle out away from them because we need to be turning away from where those torpedoes are being fired. We're going to stay on them while he's broadside with the AP. We just can't hit a citadel at this range, but my torpedoes meet their target and that is it now i hold fire on this guy because he's about to tick out and it would have been a lot easier cracking if i'd actually decided to take a shot at him and uh, now we've got the congo who had been heading to the left side of the minimap but he's come all the way back across here we see those shots coming in and i think he's missed us yep we got lucky there this is quite an agile cruiser with a build I've got on it. And so with the amount of HE spam we can put out there, we're going to stay on this guy, stay skinny, bow into him and see if we can get some more fires on and tick the damage down. Now, what I didn't say at the start is this is actually a new personal damage record in the Marblehead. So it's a double pleasure to be bringing home not only a Kraken, but a new personal best in the ship. And I think you'll agree from watching this game get played out that we certainly did play for it. But I had an eye off the minimap there. So while I'm staying bow in to the Congo and thinking, what do I do here? I'm going to get my guns onto the Langley. Now, you'd think that that destroyer might be wanting to go for a nice, big, juicy battleship instead of chasing after an aircraft carrier that's going in the opposite direction. But no, that is not going to be the case. I'm going to stay on them for guns, and I, I'm actually very sorry for this um, destroyer for going after the carrier like this. 
because while this guy is in range, it is obvious that I'm going to wail on him. And I was saying to Jared, you know, can you stay focused on that Congo? Because I can see him moving in. And uh, he is a huge, huge risk to me. I know I'm getting shot at. I'm being targeted. I know it's the Congo. There's the destroyer just coming into frame now. There are his torpedoes getting launched, and I'm just going to keep railing on. I'm thinking, I've done all the damage here. Who's going to get the kill? Is it the torpedoes? Is it my shells? Yes, it is. Congo misses me. How he didn't delete me, I don't know. But there we go. He disappears we have got the lead it's five ships plays two and i jokingly said to jared i said i'm on three kills there's two ships left i'm on for a crack in here and we started chuckling to each other quite an average game so far very much a bit of a brawl very scrappy lots of targets to shoot at and i think we've shot at the majority of targets that were in range of us now we've got a Texas, and uh, I can't remember what the other battleship is, but he'll appear soon enough. There is the Texas, and high angles of fire on this ship, so I can actually get some shots across the top. It's a bit of a blind fire, I can't see what angle he's at, and even though we're running significantly reduced dispersion on this, we are going to land a fire on him, and that is going to set us up for a kill because you can only damage control so many fires can't you so backing up there's one fire on him that looks to be damage controlled straight away he should have known better than that because with the reload i've got we are just going to keep raining on him we are still spotted by that plane from the carrier that's a dangerous thing because if he can get shots across the top i'm sure he's going to try and take them we're about half health but i'll be honest if you get caught broadside in this much like if you get caught broadside in an omaha you can get absolutely deleted it is soft from pretty much every angle but that is a double fire on the texas it is ticking and he's going to try and get away but we have got the range on him so we need to adjust our aim a little bit we're going to lead those shots and we're going to stay on him for as long as we can because even if he's running reduced ch fire chance there's still a chance there that we could get a third. There it is. It's an Iron Duke. He is pretty much full health. He's been out on the cap. And with the fires burning on that battleship, we're going to switch our attention to the Iron Duke. Looking around us, seeing what the angles are for a turn. There's a fire on the Iron Duke. We get a kill on that other battleship. And the Iron Duke appears to have damage controlled as well we're on just under 95,000 damage and we want this kill and i said i might actually just go towards him and ram him for the kraken and thinking what do i do the destroyer is in the best position for the kill here because he's on the cap and uh, i do at some point ask the destroyer to get back and i don't know whether he heard me and understood what was going on but he did oblige me, and Jared also. Um, it was a bit of a gimme kill, because uh, it's not over yet. But we know it's a Kraken, we know I'm on four kills. Perhaps I shouldn't say that the Kraken games and leave it as a, as a nail-biting finale for you to see the Kraken appear at the end of the game. But we've taken about half his health down. And I'm thinking, has he made the turn? Yes, he has. He's just managed to get around the island. He's now going away from us, which means that our torpedoes won't reach him. The Mistral has got his torpedoes off. He's going to take the points from having a solo cap. I think he appreciates the support that we gave him in the beginning of the match. And maybe that's why he was gracious enough not to YOLO this Iron Duke and take the kill away from us with his superb torpedo yoink. 
that fire is still ticking. It looks like it has just gone out, whether or not it has burnt out or whether or not he has damage controlled it. I don't know, but we think he's going to be picking up speed and we put those torpedoes out a little bit ahead of where he's going to be. But as we come round the corner, we are spotted and there is a fire straight away again. And watch that. That one is damage controlled. So he obviously let the other ones burn, save the damage control. Carrier is going in with torpedoes and I'm literally thinking I'm going to see a Kraken disappear before my eyes. We're kiting away. We know that we are targeted. We know that he is looking at us. And look at those torpedoes. A little bit too early. We let him a little bit too much. And he absolutely chunks us and gets a fire on us, which we've had to damage control. But he used that now, and he's broadside there to Jared. And I'm like, I can get him on fire again. We can do this. We can take the special K. And here we go. We're still targeted. We know he's looking for us. There is another fire. That is a double fire. Here comes the HE again. Please don't hurt me. We're lucky in that he doesn't get a fire on us. Those two fires are ticking. We're going to stay on the guns just in case. Here we go. Kraken number 141 for the Megahead. And as I said, that was a new damage record for me in the Marble Head, 126,497, with a high caliber, a Confederate, and the Kraken. Phew, that was hard work. 237 main gun hits there, and I can't remember what we got the four Citadels on. But top of the board, number one, with myself and Jared taking seven kills between us. We worked that game hard as nails. So I really do hope you've enjoyed watching that one. It was a fast and furious game to play with a little bit of a gimme kill at the end for the big K. Stick around. Have a look at this playlist. Don't forget to smash the like button. Leave me a comment. And uh, there's lots more Krakens there on that playlist to see. If you've enjoyed the video, you can tip. You can also become a member of the channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye.